Yeah, I haven't done a film reflect Mike P's uh, film reflection video in a while, so <clears throat> I had a little sur uh, surplus time. And decided to the hell with it. I'm gonna kick back and watch a movie, and I so I decided to watch uh, <clears throat> the Last Starfighter, and I realized that I never saw this movie in high definition. The last time I watched this movie is when this 25th anniversary edition was released. Um, I probably bought it a few years after that, <laughs> probably uh, 06, 07, probably. And at that time in my life, all I had was my, I still have it actually, it still works, the backup now, but all I had was my 19 inch Magnavox TV, tube, tube style TV that I bought with my first paycheck from my f uh, first official government <laughs> paycheck job at Dunkin' Donuts <laughs> when, I was, wasn't, when I was just 15 or 16 years old. <laughs> but anyways, it occurred to me, yeah, so this was the first time in my life ever watching The Last Starfighter in high definition. Yeah, I've seen videos about it. They say, you know, it, it, it does, the special effects does have that video game appearance. But you know what? For this film kind of works. <laughs> it does. It kind of works. <laughs> the only other movie I do recall seeing that Lance Guest actor in, who played Alex in this thing, was uh, Jaws the Revenge, oddly enough. <laughs> the one that uh, um, Michael Caine did, only because uh, he had a house he had to pay off. <laughs> The uh, old school actor, Robert Preston, who played Centauri, was in his 70s, I guess, when he did this. And, uh, uh, you know, he played the outer space con man. I don't think uh, it's, uh, I don't know if there's another uh, movie out there that has an outer space con man. Probably by now, yeah. But, <laughs> but back then, I don't think there were too many of those, an outer space con man. <laughs> But apparently uh, he was famous from another movie called Music Man, which I never saw, but as a lover of music, I guess I gotta get my hands on a copy of that and sit down and watch it at some point. <laughs> music Man. <laughs> Anyways, it's time for me to go to bed, so I'm just gonna wrap this up and just uh, wrap this up talking about uh, what I've always envisioned as a sequel for this movie. I have this. I had this uh, fantasy, you know, in my head of a sequel story for this uh, movie, where all the people in the trailer park, the, this uh, Starlight Star Bright uh, trailer park, um, um, Alex and Maggie go up to outer space as they do at the end of the story. But I always imagine in the sequel that they had some sort of communication line of communication with all their friends in the trailer park through their TV. If you want to talk to Alex and Maggie and see how they're doing now, they only got you know they are married, they have a couple of kids, all this stuff. All you gotta do is tune into Channel Seven on your TV. <laughs> Anyways, that was always my uh, little uh, fantasy and vision of what a sequel for this story might entail. But uh, you know, in my defense, the uh, pansy-like villain of this story, Zor. Remember, he did escape out of some pod, if you recall, <laughs> watching the movie like, again, like I just did. Yeah, the, the pansy villain of the story, Zor. <laughs> uh. Anyways, Mike B's film reflection, The Last Starfighter. Thank you for your time.